Hello viewers, today we will discuss the topic network and network security. The value of computer increases when it is connected to other computers. It is just like a telephone. If Mr. A has a telephone, then he can use his phone to call any of his friends, provided all his friends have telephones. Hence, where his friends are not having telephones, then it is useless for Mr. A to have a telephone. Similarly, where Mr. A has a computer, it will be more useful for him in case it is connected to the other computers. This connection among computer constitute a network. Therefore, a network is a collection of computer that are connected through a communication channel. There is cables, fiber optics and so on to share data, hardware and software. A network is defined as a system of interconnected computers, telephones or other communication devices that can communicate with one another and share application and data. Another definition of network is a network consists of two or more computers that are linked in order to share resources, exchange files or allow electronic communication. The computers on network may be linked through cables, telephone lines, radio waves, satellite or infrared light beams. Further, under section 2 sub clause 1J of the Information Technology Act 2000, computer network is defined as the interconnection of one or more computers or computer system or communication devices through the use of satellite, microwave, terrestrial line, wire, wireless or other communication media and terminals of a complex consisting of two or more interconnected computers or communication device whether or not the interconnection is continuously maintained. Therefore, when one or more computers or computer system or communication device are interconnected through any media mentioned above, it is called a network. Why do we all have a networks? We need network due to the following reason. One is to share peripherals devices, to share programs and data for better communication, for security of information, for access to data bases. Then we will discuss what are the types of the networks. Network can be classified into several broad categories depending on their scope and connectivity. Basic type networks such as LAN and WAN etc. and interconnected networks such as intranet and extranet and internet etc. Basic type of networks such as LAN and WAN etc. Local area network is considered as a LAN. A local network is communication network that provide intercommunication of variety of data, communicated devices with a small area. These networks connect computers and other information processing devices which are located within the limited physical area like office, classroom, building, factory, worksite, etc. LANs are the essentially a part of many organization for providing telecommunication network capabilities to end user. A small LAN is known as a TAN, tiny area network. Most of the LAN use a range of communication media like twisted pair wire, coaxial cable, wireless radio, etc. which we have already learned about the interconnect various microcomputers and works sanitation. For making this communication possible, every PC has the circuit board known as the network interface unit, so you can say NIU. Most of the LAN's useful powerful microcomputer having a large hard disk commonly known as network server 
which has a network operating system which controls telecommunication and the use and sharing of network resources. Nowadays, all the computers are designed so that it's easy to connect them to a LAN without buying any extra equipment. When Mr. A wants to send some information through his computer to Mr. B, he will put the information in its NIU with address of Mr. B's computer. The job of NIU is to deliver message safely to the computer of Mr. B. Similarly, when Mr. B wants to send the message to Mr. A, he will send it through NIU. The NIU of all the computers are connected to an electronic circuit called hub. Therefore, such interconnections of computer in a small area is called LAN. Type of LAN are the client server LAN, peer to peer LAN, client server LAN. In this individual microcomputer user clients share the service of centralized computer called server. Peer to peer LAN means here computers shares equally with one and other without relying on a central server wide area networks. Some of the organizations are very widespread where officers are not limited to a building but are spread throughout large city or metropolitan area. The communication networks which cover large geographic area are called wide area networks. This is called WANs. As in this modern time day, today activities of many business organizations are spread throughout. Therefore, such networks have become quite necessary. WANs are used for many companies for transmitting and receiving information among the workers, customers, client, etc. Across the cities, regions, countries, etc. Then we will discuss metropolitan area network. When a communication network covering a city or a metropolitan area like Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata and so on, then it is called metropolitan area networks. The connection between the computer is a WAN in usually the local telephone network. In India, telephone company Mahanagar Telephone Nagar Limited is playing very important role in metropolitan cities. For example, a man is Delnet, there is a local network connecting the libraries in Delhi. Any user may use Delnet to see which material is available in which library. Interconnected networks. Intranet, the network which connects various locations and give connectivity within the organization is called intranet. These networks are limited to the organization and these are designed in a such way so as to provide easy access to the information available on the internet website to the end user. Extranet, extranets are the those networks which link some of the internals of the companies with those of its business partners, customers, suppliers, consultants and so on. And who can assess selected internet website and company's database are known as extranet. Then we will discuss internet. Use of ICTs, internet etc. is fast expanding in 21st century. The word internet is derived from two words interconnection and networks also referred to as a net. Internet is a worldwide system of computer networks that is a network of networks which allows the user to share information on those linked computer. It consists of thousands of separately administrated networks of various size and types. Each of these network comprises number of computers or local area networks are connected by using public switched networks to create wide area networks. And when number of WANs and other interconnected networks such as intranet and extranet are connected, it results in internet. Therefore, 
internet is a world wide computer network all computers connected to internet communicate to each other only by using a common set of rules which are commonly known as a protocol for this communication each computer should have its own such address is called ip address then we will discuss why do we need network security network security is a cause of concern and study for the communication facility as network is caused to communicate and exchange data by one person to another in a limited or well defined area therefore network security measures are required to protect the network from unauthorized outsiders like hackers network security is also essential to permit authorized person to communicate securely without any fear of compromising the data further local network may also provide access to and from long haul communication be a part of internet then we will discuss the threat to network security a national bureau of standard has identified following threats to the network security the very first one is organized and intentional attempts to obtain economic or market information from the competitive organizations in the private sector organized and intentional attempts to obtain economic information from government agencies in advertent acquisition of economic or market information in advertent acquisition of information about individuals intentional frauds through illegal access to computer data banks with emphasis in decreasing order of importance on acquisition of funding data economic data law enforcement data and data about individuals government intrusion on the rights of the individual invasion of the individual rights by the intelligence communities then we will discuss what kind of what types of threats there are in network security two type of threats are there which necessitated network security the one is active threat another one is passive threat first we will discuss active threat these active threat basically there are three type of active threat the first one is message scheme modification it involves unauthorized access and some part of legitimate message is modified or changed or message is delayed or replayed or recorded in order to produce an unauthorized effect for example a message meaning allow dr gupta to read confidential file account so is modified to mean allow dr sharma to read confidential file account so denial of service it prevents the normal use or management of communication facilities this attack may also have specific target for example a person may suppress all messages directed to a particular destination sometime it also involves destruction of entire network either by disabling a network or overloading it with messages so as to degrade performance masquerade in journal it means misrepresentation there is one person misrepresent himself to be another person and secure assesses such attack usually includes one or other form of active attack it can take place by capturing and replying on authenticate sequence then we will discuss passive threats as name indicate in the passive threat there is no active threat there is neither any authorized access or modification of data or message nor there is any denial of authorized access though it's difficult to detect passive threat but possible to prevent them from becoming successful here goal of attacker is non information is transmitted it is basically of two types the one is threat of release of message content like telephone conversation e message or transferred file may contain sensitive personal or confidential data 
or information and everyone would like the attackers would stay away from this. Then we will discuss traffic analysis. It involves observing the pattern of the message sent. The attacker can determine the location and identity of communicating host and can also observe the frequency and length of the message exchange. Such type of information may be useful in knowing the nature of communication that is taking place. Basically, it involves description. There is converting the encrypted data into the plain data. Then we will discuss meaning of network security. Network security means the protection of information system and services on the network against disasters, mistakes, manipulations, so that likelihood and impact of security incident is minimized. The aim is to implement measures which eliminate or reduce significant threat to an acceptable level. According to another jurist, network security can be defined as the protection of network resources against unauthorized disclosure, modification, utilization, restriction or destruction. Security has long been an object of concern and study for the both data processing systems and communication facilities. With computer networks, these concerns are combined and for the local networks, the problems may be most acute. The main element of network securities. The main element of network securities are assurance. The first one is insurance. It means confidence that a system behaves in an expected manner according to its specification. Second one is identification authentication. Another element of network security is identification authentication. When users or programs communicate with each other, the two parties must identify each other. They must know with whom they are communicating. Then the third one is accountability audit trial. It means the ability to know who did what, when and where. It is important to do that users are responsible and accountable for their action. Automatic audit, trial monitoring and analysis to detect security breaches is an important element of network security. Then assess control. Assess control is another element of network security. However, purpose of assess control is to ensure that only authorized user have access to the system. Further, access to and modification of particular portion of data is limited to authorized individual and programs. Access to specified resources can be restricted to certain entities. Then accuracy. Another element of the network security is accuracy, which means that objects are accurate and complete. Then secure data exchange. It involves following the very first one is confidentiality. It means that data should remain private during transmission. Then integrity. It means that should remain accurate and complete during transmission. When email is sent or when programs communicate with each other, authentication is required because in certain situation it may be necessary to prove the place from where the information came from. This is called non-repudiation of origin. A sender may also require proof that message was received by the intended receiver. This is called non-repudiation of receipt. Secure data communication. Secure data communication is very important for secure data exchange and public key encryption. Digital signatures are some of the methods used for this purpose. Then reliability of the service. Reliability is probability that a system or a component will perform its specified function for a specified time under specified conditions. Reliability of a system depends upon the reliability of individuals, components and also on the system organizations.
The first one is the legal compliance. Information data that is collected, processed, used, passed on or destroyed must be handled in accordance with the current legislation of the relevant countries. Then network security measures, one is journal security measure, privileges and rights. The users, operators and system administrators should have privilege and right depending upon the role of the individual. The category of the users that are allowed access to be provided services must be documented. Then data encryption. Technologies, data encryption technologies may be deployed wherever required to protect the confidentiality of sensitive information. Then password, most common method of authentication is password and should be hard to guess. All system level password should be changed regularly. The system software installation should be carried out from original media, users permission for individual files holders may be set up. Then write, modify, access permissions should be disabled for all executable and binary files. Access to operating system source files, configuration files and their directories should be restricted to authorized administrators only. Then the servers should be regularly audited and log files must be scanned for knowing any attack and intrusions, preferably daily. A logbook may be kept of all the system administration activities on the server. Then steps should be taken for the regular updating of antivirus software. Full system scan is recommended at the end of the day. Then access to the server. The system must be protected from unauthorized use, loss or damage. Access to the server is very important and it must be limited to the administrator. Server log out and shutdown should be done when leaving the office and the door of the server room must be always kept locked. UPS system with adequate battery backup should be installed preferably with the genset to avoid any data loss or corruption due to the power failure. Then physical security. To assess the system administrator login on the server, biometric authentication technologies can be deployed. Servers and other components generally remains operational round the clock. Therefore, the physical security of the network Control center should be ensured by deploying the necessarily manual security staff to take care of the theft, fire and power breakdowns. Then backup and media. Management of all form of data storage are subject to data loss. Regular backups are must. A server data backup, a server data must be backup as per the defined policies and procedure at scheduled time. Storage of backup media. Backup media should be stored either on site or off site as per the backup policy with proper identification for quick retrieval. Then backup retention. The administration should ensure that backup are retained as per the policy requirement. Verification of the backup integrity. The administration should verify the integrity of the backup by resorting the data on the test setup and taking confirmation from the user on the integrity and correctness of the data restored. Removable media may be checked regularly on another system of readability, media identification and reliability. The backup media may be marked with the tags giving identification details like database name, operating system, name, application, name, location of storage, on site or off site and retention period etc. Recovery from backup media. There could arise situation when the server crashes due to some hardware fault. Recovery methods may be documented for reloading of the OS and server software, reinstallation of the application and the system software, 
hard recovery software and antivirus software should be installed on the server and operating system of all the clients. Then firewall security. A firewall is a system of a hardware and a software that blocks unauthorized users inside and outside the organization from entering the internet. The firewall monitors all internets and other networks activity looking for suspicious data and preventing unauthorized access a firewall is a set of related programs generally located at a network gateway server. It examines each network packet to determine whether to forward it towards its destination. In general way we can say the firewall performs following function. The one is it prevents unauthorized person from accessing the data. It blocks accesses to certain undesirable site such as a pornography, games and so on. It filters suspected emails, there is advertisement or from suspected source. It prevents remote login into a computer. Further, each firewall is connected to a public switched network through a router. However, routers are special purposes computers that have several NIUs and each of them requires internet protocol address. Other one is intrusion detection system. Intrusion detection system complements other security technology by providing information to the site administrator. IDS allows not only for the detection of attacks expertly handled by the other security components such as firewall and service wrappers, but also attempts to provide notification of any new attacks unforeseen by other components. However, main benefit of intrusion detection system is that it also provides forensic information that potentially allow organization to discover the origin of an attack. In this manner, ID system attempts to make attackers more accountable for their actions and to some extent act as a deterrent to the future attacks. Thank you viewers for watching this program.